Hey guys, long time no see, and it's great to see you again, at least appear to be looking at you. As you know, this is pre-recorded material, and by the time you get around to this, I'm on a toilet, I'm crapping away, I'm snoozing away on my bed, or I'm indulging myself with food. So when you're, you know, it looks like, it looks like I'm looking at you, but actually I'm doing something else. But it feels great again to appear to be <laughs> conversing with you and talking to you face to face. So today I'm going to talk to you about how INFPs and ISFPs use introverted thinking. Did I say that right? Do I, that, that, that's, that's rewind again. Let's rewind again. Make sure I said that right. How INFPs and ISFPs use introverted thinking, TI. Did he mean TE, introvert, extrovert thinking? Don't, don't INFPs and ISFPs use extrovert thinking? Yes, we do. We, we absolutely do use the, that function. However, we actually use all eight functions. So, we also use introvert thinking as well. And the great thing about learning about socionics is that we get to understand how we use every single one of the functions, including introvert thinking. INFPs and ISFPs, we use introvert thinking in a similar kind of matter. And what is this matter in which we use introvert thinking? We use it as a role function. So it's called a role function in socionics. So what does that mean? Well, when I, as an INFP, I meet other INFPs and I meet ISFPs, when I first talk to them, they appear like INTPs and ISTPs. And sometimes I struggle to figure out whether they're introverted thinking dominance or introverted feeling dominance. And this is because of our TI role. When we first, um, you know, when we present ourselves to other people in society, we feel like in order for other people to take us seriously, what take what we say seriously, there's almost an obligation that we present what we say in the beginning with Introvert thinking. So we use introvert thinking as almost like a mask. So how does this appear? Well, when I first meet these INFPs and ISFPs, I'm strolling about and I meet this INFP and ISFP, they have this look on their face. Like they're very almost like kind of terse, stiff, stiffly bookish kind of look. They kind of like this bookish kind of academic kind of look. And when they talk about things they speak about in such discerning way and such with impartial analysis and it appears kind of stiff and kind of put on because a little bit is put on. Um, so um, when you first meet INFPs and INF ISFPs, this is the first impression people get. And then after 30 minutes pass by, then we reveal our true selves because TI is not something that we ultimately value. We reveal FI. FI. What's FI? It ha FI has this kind of inner warmth to it that kind of exudes out. But first we appear just like, almost like a stiff TI. It's not even how INTPs and ISTPs use TI. We, we, over, we kind of over exaggerate it. We really put on this kind of, this, this very discerning kind of face and kind of this academic air about us. Um, and that's, um, that's because it's our role function, something that we put on. What is TI? TI wants to give an impartial, um, impartial, impersonal understanding of how things work and try to fit it into a model or framework. This is kind of against how FI works because introvert feeling is concerned about individual characteristics of a person. It's concerned about um, yeah, individual characteristics and, you know, personal, like, motivation, what the heart says, what the heart says, and what is good, what is ethical versus what is bad. That does not really fit with this kind of logical and personal framework in which to understand things, and we kind of resist that. But when you meet us, and it's, not, it's more than just meeting us. Even in our own time, we engage in introvert thinking. This is not extrovert thinking. Extrovert thinking is this kind of pragmatic 
thing, this pragmatic function that pushes things forward. That's not, we actually do engage in introverted thinking and actually are, yes, INFPs and ISFPs have stronger introverted thinking than extroverted thinking. Our extroverted thinking kind of sucks. It really does. We value it, but it really, it really sucks. This, this thing, this dysfunction that tries to get things done, kind of and provide structure in the outside, we, it sucks, okay? That thinking that you engage in, that, and you realize that you engage in it, most, a lot of that is introverted thinking. Our introverted thinking is stronger than extroverted thinking. Not, it's not a, you know, it's not a very strong function, but it is stronger than extroverted thinking. This deductive analysis, this is something that INFPs and ISFPs engage in. How do I know? Well, because let's talk, if you, okay, let's bring ESFPs and ENFPs into consideration here. They have introverted thinking as their polar function. Polar, meaning it's very weak, it's very, very weak, and it's very, very undervalued. So, unlike INFPs, we use it as a role, or ISFPs, we use it as a role function. So, there's obvious difference in value, we definitely, it's more obvious when you talk to an INP and ISP, the, the use of introvert thinking. And I'll give you an example. When you talk to ENFPs and ESFPs, they find it very, they could find it very hard to uh, discuss um, this impartial logical analysis. It appears very cold to them. It appears cold to, it could appear cold to us too, but we're, we actually have greater toleration for it when we're listening to impartial logical analysis, actually, we absorb and take it in more. Whereas ENFPs and ESFPs, you can tell immediate resistance, complete, um, they, they, don't, they don't like it. And when they do try to get engaged in it, they, they really trip up. Um, uh, there's a di there is a difference. Um, one thing is introvert thinking leads because it's a framework uh, that creates rules of fairness. There are conditions in which INFPs and ISFPs see that this is important in society. It's important to have these rules in order to create um, laws of fairness in the world we live in. And INFPs and ISFPs feel like they should abide by these rules of fairness to a certain degree. Of course, we value FI and we want to find our special way circumventing the system in capitalization, capitalization points. But we can, we're able to see the value of that, we're able to understand it and be able to talk about things in an impartial manner, in a logical manner, so that it could it makes sense to other people. ENFPs, ESFPs, no. You can tell they, they try to, they really see themselves as being very special. FI leads to kind of a specialness kind of mentality, but they really see themselves as very special and they don't see how any of these systems of laws of fairness applies to them personally. But INFPs, ISPs, they do see it up to a certain point, but they ultimately, we ultimately value insured feeling. Um, so the thing is, we, but we could kind of put it on a little bit too much, appear a little bit too stiff and bookish and academic when we, when we talk about things at first. This kind of bores people a little bit. I notice. Uh, so one thing is good is to be able to loosen up that TI, uh, not make it so stiff and active. I, I, I even see like INFPs and ISFPs even making up words. They make up these words that sound very academic when they write. So please, if you feel like, oh, this is a great way to talk to people, but we don't have to do that. Uh, um, these, this, these very academic sounding words and it kind of bores people. You, you see, you see that we you see us doing that. Um, that's that's the TI coming along, the TI role coming along. Um, because we feel like it's important in our presentation of our ideas, and it is. It's good to kind of show that TI, but we kind of kind of exaggerate a little bit too much. It's good to kind of loosen it up. What's a good way to work on introverted thinking? Well, one thing to know is that when FI is on, TI is off. When TI is on, FI is off. They don't work synchronicity, synchronically. Now I'm making up words. Syn, you know, at the same time. They don't work at the same time. So you got one, and the other one's off. Ti on, fi off. So how do I work on ti? Well, how I work on ti is that 
I engaged in impartial logical analysis, such as learning about socionics. A lot of um, people with FI, they don't really like socionics because of what I said, they prefer individual characteristics, they don't like this kind of impartial system describing people and their patterns and how they, they, they work, right? But I feel like it's very good for me to uh, get into that and learn it about it. So I engage in socionics, which is a TI system, much more than MBTI, um, this kind of impartial analysis. And one thing is that since I value FI, we value FI, the FI is going to try to turn back on again. So when I engage in TI, if I want to keep going, turn on. And what I do is like say, tell my FI, okay, you can, you know, just post, postpone your analysis. Don't, don't try to talk right now. I'm trying to focus on TI. So if I want it to turn on, TI keeps going on. So the thing is what usually, how we usually present ourselves is that we try to explain things logically. It's very discerning kind of TI um, deductive kind of matter. Uh, but then, when pressed for further logical deduction, we're like, screw this, screw this TI. The reason why I love this system is because of FI. I, I don't want to, it's not because of TI. I'm just using this, I'm just using TI as a way to present my ideas. But the reason why I really believe in these ideas is because of FI, because of my FI motivations, ethical reasons. I believe that this is good for because my heart tells me so. That that's the reason why. And I start to forego INFPs and ISTPs, ISFPs, they forego this TI logical analysis for FI. They try to present it first and then but then they say screw this FI. FI is the bomb. We love FI. Um, so what I do is I actually try to postpone um, this um, TI kind of analysis. Uh, F, my FI va evaluation, so I gauge a TI, and F, my FI is going like, no, no, this is, this is cold, and, and this, this, this is, what you're engaging in is some cold calculative analysis, you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm like, okay, FI, just back off, back off, let me get engaged in my TI more, and when I do, my TI gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And the good thing about it is that it's good to have a balance between FI and TI. Sometimes FI after I engage in this exercise, I realize how much I try to judge things as being good or bad without fully understanding it. So the good thing about TI is that it's about understanding. So TI allows me to understand the system and how it works before I form a log uh, an ethical evaluation of it. And the good thing about it is that I have a more nuanced view and I'm more convincing to people because I took the time to understand it from a TI point of view, which, you know, half of people value, half of the people in the world value TI. So, and I take something like socionics, I understand that it exists, right? Some people think, especially FI people, they're like, F, you know, we should just get rid of socionics because it's such a cold way of understanding people. I know it exists. I'm going to take the time to understand it. I'm going to understand what's good about it, right? After I take the time to understand about it. And therefore, I'm more convincing, first of all. Second of all, I could take what exists and find what good I can make out of it. What kind of FI good I can make out of it. So that's the way, that's why it's good to engage in that. And when you, what you'll find is that more engaged in TI and you do this exercise where you postpone your FI analysis more, you find it easier to talk with the INTPs and ISTPs and it's just, just fun engage, engaging with them in a different kind of way. So that is how we engage in TI, how we could improve our presentation of TI by loosening it up in our presentation but also kind of engaging in it more, um, kind of strengthening it as sort of a cognitive exercise. So there you go.